<laughs> Welcome. Thank you. So as I said, he even does not choose us. <laughs> Tell me, Jose, you have heard Eva. Local authorities are important. Do you agree on that? Not only I agree, I think they have a huge responsibility. A lot of the repression of human rights take place at local level. Uh, as we see, for example, currently in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, we've seen also that in, in Bosnia or in Rwanda, where the level of accountability is huge. But also local communities offer an opportunity to create a human rights island and places of opportunities. I quoted one thing that Eva said, which shocked me a bit. She said, a lot of people say human rights is an utopia of the past. Very strong sentence. So my question to you is the concept of human rights not as such under threat. I, I tend to agree with that. I think, I think there is a big push and a threat for human rights as we've seen it up until now. And this is a moment where both multilateralism and values need to be reinforced. And that's one of the roles that the United Nations can play. Do you think that is something like, a, let's say, universal non-respect of human rights? I see that uh, what, I, what I have seen in many countries around the world is a push from governments to escape and backpedal on their own commitments and uh, find excuses and ways to shortcut the commitments that they gave when they signed treaties and obligations. I said all the countries where you have been working. Can you tell us just a nice anecdote of say this is really something that shocked me? Uh, but for example, some of the current work where we've seen the efforts from the authorities in the Congo with regards to the recognition of the albino community, um, the push of a civil society to have their constitutions and their rights recognized, um, the movement for return in Bosnia by IDPs across the different communities was something quite uh, moving. I think we, because this is about no limits and uh, if you're in human rights and as I said, you're the guy with the mud on the shoes, don't you have sometimes to, to go beyond your limits to do something? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, human rights offers a very good framework for action, but uh, it all depends on how you implement it on the field and there is no manual for that. You need to think completely out of the box to, to, get, it, to get it implemented. Sometimes uh, that requires uh, go beyond what your uh, bosses have uh, told you to do, uh, but obviously there are certain limits to that, moral limits and uh, human life limits. Speaking about bosses, do you think that the United Nations can make the difference? I think so. I think I think uh, the United Nations and its human rights architecture is more necessary now than it has ever been. Uh, be precisely because of this threat and all this questioning to the, to the system, and that requires a strong vocal uh, human rights uh, uh, voice on human rights on, for the United Nations. You told me, just like Eva, that you are now more than, than 20 years of your life, you're devoted to human rights. What is it you say, this is something I really want to achieve before I die? I would like to see um, universal recognition and less questioning of human rights. I would like to see the multilateral organizations like the European Union, the African Union or the United Nations more principle based and being more effective and more activist and less diplomatic uh, because I think in many ways that serves as an excuse for sacrificing the principles. Do you think that's realistic if you look to all these huge institutions with, we see the people they don't like anymore the big institutions, is that not, not a big issue there? I, th I, I think that's really what is, uh, I think that the civil society and the population demand that. And if the governments want to bridge the gap with the population, uh, they need to push for that type of uh, intervention and advocacy. We've seen, of course, Eva, she's, she's a professor. Uh, you are there on the field. Um, a lot of people, students, young people watching us here, they dream about a nice career in a bank or a financial auditor, earn a lot of money. What would be your message to them? I think young people are really the, the, the future and they have the possibility uh, to make a difference. Uh, young people have a level of creativity that many people who are working in bureaucracies don't have. And I think the role that uh, senior people have in organizations is to create a space for that creativity to come out rather than to repress it. That's something that uh, you learn to admire, that level of creativity that comes in place after place. But it's nice to speak about creativity, but I could imagine myself working all the time on that. And what you see, 
do you really see an evolution in, in the respect of human rights? Can you say that now human rights are more respected than five, ten years ago? I would say on the contrary. But what do you? Um, but what what keeps me doing what what I'm doing is, for example, to see civil society organisations, youth groups uh, that face incredible level of repression by governments. Uh, being more aware, much better prepared, and much more sophisticated in their arguments. They know their rights, they fight for their rights, they argue their rights, and that's what makes them effective, but that's why they also are perceived as threats by, by governments. So what you say now, if I can translate your, your, your statement, if you want to respect human rights, it will not be the international organization or the political level, but it will be the people, it will be the citizens. Is that what you're saying? Human rights is, a, is, is about a people, and I think the people need to argue for their rights. And I sincerely hope that the organizations become mechanisms to support this anxiety of the population to have their rights respected. So the organizations have a role in order to push it, in order to push the people to go further? They are supposed to, to provide those mechanisms for the people to have their voices, their, their voices heard. This is when, for example, in Sudan, we were able to get local communities to express their concerns, and that would be transmitted to the Human Rights Council of places that otherwise nobody would have heard of. That's exactly what the role of the organizations is supposed to be, to get the voices from the field heard in places far away and to echo their concerns so that the concerns don't get isolated. The moment a human rights problem is isolated or it is confined to a specific place, then it's at the expense of the authorities. So that's why that's one of the roles that, that the organizations can play, get the voices heard outside the local communities. In the list of everything you did in the beginning, I mentioned, but I didn't mention that you have been working in Stockholm. Can you say something about the organization of Stockholm and what is the role of that organization? By the way, we're now a Belgian as the Secretary General. <laughs> No, that was, that was a very interesting both uh, working and, 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 and living experience. Uh, I think coming from the field to live in a society that is so well organized as the Swedish one, which takes a lot of pride uh, in promoting human rights abroad is something that uh, is something absolutely uh, commendable. Yet on the other side, many people in the, in, the, in, the, in the society are stuck in their welfare and sometimes that leads to a level of selfishness and tolerance of human rights abuses that needs to be addressed, and that's a mismatch that uh, shocked me. So people came to TEDx uh, Brussels today, they have a lot of messages, I think that must really be like that. But you can, to finish, give one message. What is the one message that people should take with them going home on the field of human rights? Uh, the, the work of human rights uh, is, uh, it, it needs to be done every day. It does not uh, it's everybody's duty to fight uh, for, for human rights, and there can be no conformism in it. Uh, there is human rights, as we know right now, it's under threat, under threat by security, under threat by unilateralism, under threat by private companies, and uh, it's everybody's uh, duty to defend, to protect, and to advocate for human rights. I think it's very nice to have somebody like Jose with us because he doesn't talk about it. He's there all the time and he goes in places which are very strange, but he works on human rights. Thank you, Jose. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.